Let's go to John. Let's go to John chapter 6. I want to read verses uh, 24 through 27. And it reads as follows. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, somebody say on the other side. Say they moved. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? I love when the text asks questions. Yeshua answered them and said, most assuredly, I say unto you, I like King James Version right here, verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. Let's get context. This was an impactful and eventful few days in Yeshua's ministry. Passover was near, and by this time, he performed the miracle of feeding 5,000. He gave thanks. Say, he gave thanks. This will preach right here, but I'm not here to preach this. But he gave thanks, and five loaves of barley and two small fish were distributed to the multitude who were following him, having seen him perform miracles on the sixth. On the sick, rather. And so we got to understand that the reason why Yeshua already has an audience because he's already done things that have caught the attention of onlookers. And so they've seen him perform miracles on the sick and, and now they're following him to see what he does next. And when they get into a particular place on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, the Sea of Tiberias, when they get to this other side, they're looking for Yeshua. And there's a question asked of Philip. But to get to the point, the point was how are we going to feed this multitude? How are we going to feed this, this multitude and bring me the lunch, you know it. And he gave thanks and then he distributed it. Mm. He just gave thanks. I got to do this. He gave thanks and there was an increase. I didn't come here for that, but I had to put it in. I said he gave thanks and there was an increase. Okay. An exponential increase. Do you agree? And, and so... They had followed him because they seen him perform miracles on the 6th. And according to verse 11 in the same chapter that we're in, the multitude had as much as they wanted. They had their fill. Say, they had their fill. Mm -hmm. Moreover, uh, uh, leftovers were gathered filling 12 baskets of barley loaf fragments. I said, they, the baskets were filled from fragments. It's going to be hard for me not to teach some of this right here, but I said the baskets were filled from fragments. See, I just need some pieces. Okay. I, I, just, I just need some pieces. Watch this. After he's moved for others, all I need is pieces. Y'all missed it. I said after all was filled, all I need, his disciples got the pieces. Okay. Say, I just need the pieces. Okay, okay. The baskets were filled with fragments. The witnesses there proclaimed him as the prophet of prophecy. They said, this is the prophet who is to come. Mm-hmm. Consider this, the proclamation came after the miraculous provision. And so after he had proved his ability, 
That's when the proclamation came. So after he had done something. Boy, I'm be here all day. I said after he had done something, that's when it's like, oh, yes. This is who we've been waiting for. And so Yeshua departed alone to the mountain before evening, perceiving the multitude would take him by force and make him king. Now, most of us who are going to be promoted by the masses will let them push us into a lane that we're not supposed to feel. But Yeshua said, I see what y'all doing, so let me remove myself. So before somebody puts you in a place that you don't belong or puts you in a place where you're not called to be at the present time, you ought to remove yourself. I'm just talking about learning from Yeshua. But what happens when people promote us and people say that we ought to be in a certain seat, we'll be like, yes, I should. It's about time you noticed who I am. Y'all can recognize the gift in the room. Are you serious right now? But he removed himself. I'm just talking about Yeshua. He removed himself when they were going to make him king. That'll preach right there, but I didn't come for that. When I said it was an eventful few days, didn't I? Because this is all happening in the same really 48-hour period. Mm. But he departed. He, he went to the mountain because he was perceiving that they were going to uh, take him by force and make him king. When evening came, his Talmudim launched out to the sea. His Talmudim, meaning his disciples, the twelve, launched out on the Sea of Galilee towards Capernaum. And the seas became rough. Some of us are familiar with this text. And the seas became rough. And there he rejoined them by walking on the sea. Can I have a little me time right here? He was sea walking. I'm coming back over here. I, he was, I mean, the text says that he was sea walking. Y'all can do that what y'all want to do. He was, he was sea. Mm, yes, I would do it, but I won't. Uh, so he, he was, he was sea walking. I want you to catch this. Willingly receiving him, they reached their intended destination immediately. I just want to give you a couple nuggets before I get to this main course. But watch this. I say willingly receiving him, they reached their intended destination immediately just because of the way that they received him. Oh, man, that ought to minister to somebody right now. I say it's the way that they received him that caused them to get to what they were trying to get to Immediately. So they went from rough seas to their destination immediately because of the way that they re because the way they received him. Okay. But I want you to key in right here because they received him. This ain't the one where we fit we, we, we see them begging it. Mm -mm. They just received him. Sometimes when things are going rough for me, I just need to. Receive him, watch this, willingly. Mm. And immediately, they reached their intended destination. Uh huh. So here we are, the following day, the multitude has found him on the other side of the sea saying, Rabbi, when did you come here? Watch this, the multitude knew that initially Yeshua had left with his Talmud. I said the multitude knew that Yeshua had left with his telling them, this is crazy. If you would, they were trying to track his every movement. I'm talking. I said they were trying to track his every movement. Follow me here. The crowd noticed that Yeshua nor his telling them uh, weren't there anymore. They're like, hold on, wait a minute. Because after they were filled, after they had finished eating, then suddenly they lost track of where he was. After they were filled, they lost track. I'm just talking about the text. I said, after they were filled, church, I'm talking. I said, after they were filled, they lost track of where he was. And so when they were satisfied, they lost track of where the master was. Uh, see, see, they had provision. And lost track of the prov they lost track of the prov let me come back over here to the text I don't want to be accusative they lost track of the where it they notice now 
You ain't see him walking on the mountain. I mean, he literally, he literally went up. Usually when somebody's moving up, it's, it's kind of by themselves. It's kind of almost catch your attention. But it only catch your attention if you're looking at eye level. But if you're looking at that sandwich, they had fish and bread. They was eating fish sandwiches out there. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. That's why the churches have fish fries to this day. Because <laughs> it'll make the people sit down. If you look at the text, Yeshua told them sit down. Mm. Anyway, I don't have, I can't stick it there too long. I just want to, I just want to get us to where we're going. But the crowd noticed that Yeshua know his them were there. And so they caught boats themselves and came to Capernaum. Consider this, they made moves to be in his presence again. This is good to me. I said they made moves. I don't want to preach the text. I want to teach the text. Because they made moves to be in his presence. Are you hearing what I'm saying in principle? They made moves to be in his presence. Uh huh. They'd witnessed what he could do for the sick. And they'd experienced what he could do for many having, not having much. And so once you've seen what the master, what God, what Yeshua is capable of doing for the sick, you'll start trying to get into his presence. Mm. And then when you have an experience yourself, watch this, what they witnessed wasn't what they experienced. They witnessed him heal the sick, but they experienced what he could do for many without having much. Has anybody experienced what God can do for you when you didn't have much? You didn't see much. Watch this. They didn't see the baskets before he gave thanks. Can I put this into your thought realm? The baskets were already there. But before he gave thanks, they didn't have anything in them. So somewhere in the vicinity, am I outside the text? Somewhere in the vicinity or where they were, there were already 12 empty baskets. Watch this. When God has something set aside for you, you can see it is empty, but it's about to be filled any moment now. Oh, God, I said, I said, I said when you're in this vicinity, if you're really in it for him, you can look at an empty vessel, but any moment now, somebody say any moment now. Can I get a couple people to believe with me and say any moment now? The vessels are about to be filled. Now, if you're real radical, say with fragments. Some of us want full pieces, and we don't understand that we can be filled with with fragments, I'm just, whoo, help me, help me. Help me, Holy Ghost, I'm trying to teach. And so here we are in verse 25, and the crowd asks you, sure, when did you come here? We didn't see you. We were fed by you, and then we lost track of you. I said, we were fed by you. We were satisfied by you. We were filled by you, but then we lost track of where you are. And some of us have been filled by him. And some of us have been satisfied by him, but we've lost track of where he is. The question is, why were you following him in the first place? And so King James Version translate that Yeshua answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles. Watch this. You ain't coming here to see another miracle. God help my soul. I said, you're not coming to here to see another miracle. This is what he's telling the audience. He's telling the multitude that's in front of him. You didn't even come here to see the miracles. But because you ate of the loaves. And we feel. I know why you really came. <laughs> Let me say this. He knew their true motives. Get this. Motives are the material and the motor of our reason. I said motives 
are the material and the motive of our reason. Catch the principle here. Motives put mindsets into motion. Because in order for us to have a mindset, usually, no, all the time for us to have a mindset, we have to receive some set of information. Does that make sense? And so it's not just enough to receive the information, it's how we respond to the information. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so modals put mindsets into motion. Yeshua knew where they were truly coming from, and it wasn't the other side of the sea. I said Yeshua knew where they were truly coming from, and he knew what they were really coming for. The truth is they came for their fill again. And some of us just keep showing up to the proximity of where he is to be filled Again, and truth be told, we lose track of him. Mm, let me come back over here to the text. Listen close. Many will move into the proximity of the provision and miss the purpose. And so they'll come to where the, you put free in front of anything, I bet you you'll have an audience. You put free in front of anything, I bet you you'll have a mass of people. You will have a multitude. Just put free on it. Watch this. It didn't cost them much. All it cost them was their energy. Oh, my goodness. I said all it cost them was their energy to move. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, let me work this text a little bit. But they came for their film again. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. Don't mistake... Proximity for presence. <laughs> what do you mean don't mistake proximity for presence? Just because you can get into the proximity of the presence doesn't mean that you can tap into the presence. And see, some of us are in the proximity of the presence not tapping in to the purpose of the presence. Watch this because his presence has purpose. He's not there just to satisfy the flesh. Help me, Holy Ghost. I said, he's not, okay. He's not just present so that we can get our feel. Because their flesh was satisfied because they had a hot fish sandwich. Huh? And it didn't cost them nothing. It's interesting to me because most things that are easily obtained, most things that are easily obtained are rarely, they rarely hold their value continually. Things easily obtained rarely hold their value continually. And so watch this, they obtained it easily because watch this, all they had to do was sit there. Nope, 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 nope. Watch this. Don't mistake the reception of provision as the reception of the provider. Let me say it again. I say don't mistake the reception of provision as the reception of the provider. So some of us think on the goodness of Yeshua and all he's done for us. Because watch this, once he had done something for them, then they proclaimed him to be him when they received something. Watch this, they were following him because he had already healed, he had already done miracles on the sick, but now that they had an experience, now they say he is the prophet that is to come. Some people uh, won't call you who you are until they get something from you. Some people won't recognize for who you recognize you for who you are until they get something out of you. 
And now that they've gotten something out of him and, and they were satisfied and they were filled, now they're saying he's the prophet and now they're following him and they're putting energy into being wherever he is to receive of him again to be in his presence. Again, and some of us find ourselves in, 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 in church spaces. Uh, I'm not just talking about the four walls. I'm talking about gatherings. I'm talking about wherever it is we find ourselves in, in the proximity of the presence only looking for the provision what you gonna give me this time watch this what are you gonna do for me this time Uh uh-huh I ain't talking about y'all I'm talking about them make no mistakes motives must be checked Motives must be checked. Yeshua is checking the motives of the multitudes. Boy, y'all better listen to that two times. I said Yeshua is checking the motives of the multitude. His answer wasn't just a call for examination. His answer was a call of cancellation. Y'all need to stop acting like this. Because I know why you're really here. You're not really here for me. You're really here for what I have for you. I'm not making this up. He said, you seek me not because you saw the miracles. You didn't even come for the miraculous. You came for the meal. Here's the thing. Motives prompt and produce pursuits. Listen close. Motives interest us to invest thoroughly with the currency of our energy. Watch this. You will put so much energy into what your motives really are. They didn't follow him a block, y'all. They didn't walk behind him. They didn't even really know where he was. They probably had to do at least a little level of intel to hear where he had landed because they lost track of where he was. And so however they got that information, watch this. They said when they looked, the text says when they were down there, they noticed that there were no other boats. And so they waited for the boats that were coming from Tiberias. They were waiting for those boats. So watch this. They waited to get back into his presence. God help me. And so watch this. They waited for the boats to come in. They waited for the tide to shift. Can I do it? They was waiting for the tide to change. They was waiting for the move to happen so that they can get, they were trying to catch a wave. And so, and when they, uh, they were seat walking, they had to be trying to catch a wave anyway. But, but, but when they saw the boats, they got in the boats. I didn't know what, the text doesn't say that they had to pay for the boats, but we know they had to at least wait for them. So watch this, it cost them time. It cost them their time, and it cost them their energy to be filled Temporarily. It cost them their time, and it cost them their energy to be filled temporarily because they came for the provision and not the provider. And some of us are not making it through life as we should because we're only coming for the temporal things. We want to hear the message that secures temporal things for us because, watch this, we want temporal things sometimes more than we want eternal things, if we will be honest. I'm just saying, check your motives. Look at the energy (laughs) they put into being filled. Let me ask you a question, church. How much energy... Have you put in to being filled? They caught bolts. Just consider this part right here because they caught bolts with no mention of rough seas. When the disciples caught the boat moving on to the next place, they caught rough seas. But the text gives no mention of rough seas when these Followers got on the boat. And so because we think that we're, things are calm for us while we're trying to move into the presence of the Most High that we have the right motives. And I'm here to tell you that ain't it. 
Because the seas say the same seas. Watch this. In the same period of time. Now, we live in Florida, so we know storms can come and go like that. We know this. But that's how storms happen in real life. They can come and go like that. So anyway, the rough seas came, and when the disciples received Yeshua, they got there immediately. These, this multitude was waiting on the shore for the boats to come so they could ride across on apparently calm seas. Because again, I just want to make sure that the text doesn't mention anything about the weather conditions when they were trying to move into the presence. But when the disciples, when the Talmudim were moving for ministry purposes, they had a rough ride. And we're looking at the experience of the multitude and wondering why some of us have such a rough... Let me get back over here. I just... I just... Ah, watch this. Motives reveal the truth of our actions and our responses. And so watch this. When there's a case that's, that's going on and, and something has happened, what are they looking for? They're looking for the motive. Why did you do what you did? Watch this. This is the same thing that the text is asking us principally. Why are we doing what are we doing? Why are we moving trying to relocate Yeshua? We're not moving for ministry purposes. We're moving for the next meal. We're moving for the next feel. And there's a multitude of people. I'm not talking to Talmud. I'm talking to the multitude. There's a difference. Because watch this. I was reading something that Talmud disciples don't want to just know what the rabbi knows. They want to know who the rabbi is. And that's the difference. For those of us who want to know who he is, is more than what he has. Because, see, some are only looking for the blessing, but they have no relationship with the blessor. And some only want the provisions, and they're not really looking for the provider. They want the miracles, not the miracle worker. For wanting a miracle worker, I always have access to what he has. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But when I only want what he has, I'm missing who he is. And so when we only want what he has, watch this, for us, for our family, if that's all that we want, we're missing the purpose. Watch this, if that's the priority of what we want, we're missing the purpose. Trying to get into the proximity of the presence. Mm. Are you with me so far? Ooh, it's a little heavy in here, a little, a little heavy in the atmosphere. Are you thinking? Good. The multitude was moving in his direction. But his answer wasn't just a call for them to check themselves. It was a call for them to counsel this errant way of thinking. And so motives reveal the truth of our actions and our responses. They came there for their feel. Listen close. They came there for their feel and missed the main course. Any of y'all ever went to a restaurant and sat down and you was there to get, I'll just talk about me and my wife. We go to this particular restaurant that has really good food. And I'm, I'm coming there for the prime rib. Anybody know anything about me? I'm coming there for the, I'm coming there for the steak, period, point blank. You hear what I'm saying? You Lamb or steak, that's the first thing I'm looking for on your menu, period, point blank. Right? So that's what I come there for. Now I might nibble on in this particular place. It's a Mexican restaurant, so they have the salsa and the chips. And watch this, if you are not careful because they will keep bringing you out the salsa and the chips that you didn't order. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. They will, <laughs> I say, 
And so they will bring you these, they ain't even appetizers, because you got to pay for appetizers. Usually these ain't even, this is complimentary. And that's the meal that he gave them. It was a complimentary meal. They didn't even ask for it. God help me. Y'all missed it. I said, they didn't ask. Because here's my thinking, this is me. Y'all found a boat. Y'all could have found some, y'all could have found a snack or something on the way. But it was like, nah, I can get that for free. Anyway. <laughs> what? And so they'll bring out this stuff. And if you're not careful, my point is not careful, you'll fill up on things that you didn't even order. If you're not, and it tastes good too. Oh Lord, it's a, I'm just I'm talking about the place I'm going. I ain't talking about none of the, the spots you might go to. I'm talking about the spot. Look, I ain't giving them no free advertisement either, though. But uh, so, <laughs> but when I partake, I, I and I, I'm a chip person. I love chips and salsa. I, I, ain't nothing wicked or wrong about chips and salsa. But I didn't come there. I need you to hear me principally. That's not what I came for. But if I'm not careful, I'll fill up on it. And watch this. It's not that I don't get to take the meal home because I can. But now I have to reheat it. Let me give it to you like this. I have to rekindle it. I got to heat it up again because I didn't partake of it when it was fresh. I missed it. I missed it when it was fresh because I filled up on what I didn't order. And some of us are filling up on things that are not in order. Anywho, and let me be clear, it's not that the loaves and the fish were out of order. That should not have been, at the same time, it should not have been what they were there for. And Yeshua is checking their motives because he said, I know why you're here. You ain't here for no miracles. You here for a meal. The Messiah says to the multitude, do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to an everlasting life. In other words, don't toil over temporary taste. Look at somebody say, it won't last. And that's what too many of us do. We toil. That's what the word labor in the text means. It says toil. I like labor, but toil got a different weight to it. Toil is like you're going through it for, for no reasons. Uh, toil is like it was, it, was, it was heavier than it had to be when you are toiling. And some of us have been toiling for temporary taste. Some of us ain't going to even like the way that tastes tomorrow. You know, there are some people that won't even eat leftovers. <laughs> and I say, some of us toil over temporary things, and we get, watch this, we spend so much energy. These folks were looking for Jesus after they lost track of him, like, where is he? They waited for boats, and they got to where he was. So somehow, some way, they found where he was. And they made every effort to get there to be filled again. How is it that we're looking to be filled from God and still missing him? What do you want to be filled with? That which satisfies that's temporal? Or that which endures to everlasting life? Which one are you looking for? What did we, what did we really come for? Because Yeshua is checking motives. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't miss this. That which is temporal lacks the capacity to be fulfilling. So as long as you're chasing something that's temporal, you're never going to be satisfied. Can I tell on myself? I and my wife are going through a major renovation at the house. It's basically going to be a new house by the time we finish with it. You hear what I'm saying? It's basically going to be a brick. The, the front going to look different. And ain't just paint neither. We putting stone on the front. And we bless him. I love stone. But new floors, new paint, new kitchen. And we bless his name. 
But can I tell you the truth about this remodel? I'm already thinking about the next one. I can't, I literally can't help myself. And watch this, I am satisfied with all that we've chosen so far. Look, I literally got a new room in my house. This, this is a true story. Literally, it's a new a room that wasn't there before. We created. Abracadabra actually was construction. But <laughs> it was a process. Anyway, but I planned it, and we planned it, and we, went, we all get over it back and forth because I care way too much about design for a dude. That was too much information. But anyway, so we went through all this to get through this renovation. I just, and in my mind, I was like, I just can't. You know how you say stuff. I can't wait. Until this is over. I can't wait until this is finished. But I know me. Because what I want is this thought of making everything to the max that I can get it. I can't help it. It's the way that I am. And so I'm already looking at the back window. It's the three pane window. I'm looking at the back three pane window in my house. And I don't see a window. I see a screen door. Not a screen door. I actually see a, a sliding door. Three panes wide. They move all the way to the side. So I can expand it to a deck that doesn't exist. So that when we're at home because we can be home by this, hey, some days we just spend out on the porch. This got to be covered. I don't want no screens. Mine has going to have to have windows. I don't want to have nets. And I'm, I want to be... Side note, anybody want to be outside but don't want to be outside? Right. Okay, I'll just, let me come back over here to the message. The point of me saying all that is this. I'm satisfied with what I have seeking something else. And I know the truth of it is, if I'm blessed to realize that, it's only going to make me look for something else. And so it came to me while I'm doing this, it's like, you're never going to be satisfied receiving the things that are temporal. All that you, all that energy that I'm putting into it, knowing that I'm not going to be satisfied. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So am I saying for you not to do things like that? You missed it. I'm saying why is it that we get so wound up about things that are not going to satisfy us eternally? So I tell myself whether it happens or not can't be the most important thing. If it happens, thank God. But I can't orient my world around things that are temporal. I can't give the tithe of my time to, oh God, I said I can't give the tithe of my time to that which is temporal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I can't give the best part of my time, you know, when I'm the most awake, when I'm the most attentive, when I'm the most focused. I cannot give that. To something else. I can't give it to that which is temporal. Somebody say, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I want us to understand this, that motives can create and change appetites. Motives can create and change appetites. Don't miss the main course. I got one more thing for you. Motives set order. Mm. Motives set order whether they be pure or improper. Whether they be pure or improper, the principle remains. Motives set order. Here's the objective. Yeshua offers the means, and furthermore, he orders the mandate for pure motives. So he's trying to tell us how to set and obtain pure motives, and it's through him. Somebody say it's through him. Watch this because he is the bread. Anybody ever went to one of those restaurants? Well, before you get your main course, what do they have on your table? Let me, let me, let me, let me ask you a question. Did you order it? How many go there because you know it's going to be there? You ain't got to be honest. You ain't got to be honest. Nick was like, yeah, he got me on that one, Potty. <laughs> Some of us don't even like the restaurant that much. We just want to go there to get the. Come on now. No, speak the truth. I'm, I'm... 
Shata. You can't wait to get there. Because you know, by the time you get comfortable in your seat, if it ain't there already, somebody's going to be, watch this, bringing you a basket. And it's full of full pieces. Ain't no fragments. You give me a fragment of some bread. This ain't gospel. You give me some fragments on my table. I'm getting up and leaving. I... <laughs> no, you give me full pieces when I sit. But you know, a lot of times when I go to a restaurant, that bread will sit right there. Because I came here for the lamp. Let me stop. But in, within the context of his teaching, he is teaching them that he is bread. This is the same text where he offers communion for the first time. When he tells them to eat of my body and to drink, this is the same text. This is the same chapter. And so he's teaching them about the appetite that they need to have. And the text is teaching us about the appetite that we need to have to endure until eternity. To endure for what is everlasting. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is what we should toil for. Because sometimes if we be honest, our testimony is toiling. But he says if you're going to toil for something, you are toiling waiting for the boats to come so that you can find your way across a whole sea just to eat. But if you're going to toil over something, toil over something that's not going to be temporal, toil over that which is everlasting. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because the question that comes after this was, what can we do to work the works? Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so Yeshua offers the adherent to employ themselves in that which endures to eternal life. The employment is found in belief in the Messiah that feeds corresponding behavior. That which he gives to us is to fuel how we live for him. That which, he, that which he gives to us fuels how we live for him. Because when he's giving you what is everlasting, it's because he's trying to bring us into what is everlasting. And so when he offers the woman at the well water in which she would thirst no more, I'm pretty sure that she went somewhere and got some water. But she never had to go back to the well. Because it was well done. Let me stop. But when she, she didn't have to go back and watch this and try and be satisfied in life because the truth of her testimony was her life wasn't satisfying her. She thought relationships were going to satisfy her. And Yeshua said, the one that you with ain't even yours. And she's looking for Jacob's well, and he's like, you missing the well that's right in front of you. And some of us are looking for a meal, and the meal's right in front of us. Some of us only come to be satisfied temporarily. Well, I want to change your appetite. I want our appetites to change for that which endures for everlasting. How do we get it? That's what the audience asks. If you look down that text, it's like, how do we do it? You got the works, the works. Well, how do we work the works? You got to believe on the Messiah. You got to believe. He says, I'm paraphrasing, you got to believe on me. Oh, you hearing what I'm saying? Say, I got to believe on him. Here's the thing. That belief is going to feed my behavior. Because we become what we consume, and we act like what we ate. Because watch this, when you eat something that doesn't agree with you, you can't hold it. I say, okay, when you, when you eat something that doesn't agree with you, I'm not trying to be nasty, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Anybody ate something that didn't agree with you, watch this, it upset your stomach. Watch this, and your body rejected it. Because there's very few things that upset your stomach that were nasty going down. Am I telling the truth? When it went down, you didn't feel no type of way about it, but all of a sudden, 
You got the Bee Gees. Anybody know what the Bee Gees is? Bubble gut. She got the, come on now. Come on now. Y'all like, come on now. Huh? Huh? Your stomach shouldn't sound like it's gargling. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Your gut should not sound like they are gargling. That ain't right. Somebody say that ain't right. And so watch this. I want y'all to get the principle because your body rejected it. But it was good going down to you. So watch this. It tasted good. And the taste was only temporary. Because it couldn't even stay in you. Because it upset your body. And you had to spew it up. And on, huh? And you should, you're not supposed to go back to your vomit like a dog. So once it's out of you, you're not supposed to go back to it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so for some of us who are really trying to walk this life, there are things that we are taking into our body that are upsetting our system, and we got to get it out. Here's the better thing. Stop putting it in there. Oh, God. If you stop looking for that, because what is everlasting will never upset the body. God help me. I said that which, I hope you hear me corporately. I said that which is everlasting will never upset the body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because I gave this to you for eternity's sake. I gave this to you so that you could endure, watch this, through the rough seas. I gave this to you so that you can go through hard times. I gave this to you so that you can get to an everlasting place. Not this temporal life, but an everlasting life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The question is, what's our motive? Because motives matter on a level called everlasting. I want to give you your message entitlement for this morning. Motives matter. Motives matter, ladies and gentlemen. We got to understand how serious motives are and that we have the wrong ones. He has given us a text in which we can get the principle of how to obtain the correct one. How do I obtain? How do we obtain pure motives? Well, the only way I can obtain pure motives, I have to come to one who is a pure provider. But watch this. I got to come to one who is a pure provider purely for the provider and not just purely for the provision. I can't be looking for the provision. I can look for the provision purely, but I have to seek the provider primarily. So I can get what he has because there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with it is that is when that's all I want. If all I want out of you is what you can give me, then I've abused you. That is, that's, that's abuse. When it's not enough just to be in your presence, God, help me here. Without ever getting something, can, can, can I have a relationship with for you whether you play keys or not? Can I have a relationship with you whether or not you show up to church? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Can I have a relationship with you whether or not you sing? Can we do this thing called life together? Huh? But motives matter because that's what actually moves mindsets. And so sometimes we're focused on the mindsets and we got to understand the motive behind the mindset. How did you get to that mindset? What was the motive? Because the motive is going to put the body in motion. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And sometimes the body has the wrong motives. But the real body can't let it sit in its system. It can't stomach it. That's when you see folks that call themselves saved just continually doing the wrong thing. It, subs it ever bother you? It ever bother you? It ain't like you being judgmental, like, okay, because everybody, all have sin and fallen short of the glory. But you see somebody just, just keep acting up. And I know I'm supposed to keep forgiving you, but you just keep. And, and it's upsetting me. Because one thing I'm so glad about, that forgiveness is a side note. One thing I'm so glad about that forgiveness is I got to forgive you. I ain't got a fellowship with you now. 
miss me with it. I forgive you. I don't hold against you. I ain't going to look at you with no grub. Man, we ain't got to hang out now. You hear what I'm saying? Because you, you just keep backing up. But how foolish of, a, of, it, of us would it be if we would keep consuming that which upsets our systems? Well, some of us ain't even upset because we keep having these out-of-body experiences. Mm-hmm. They don't upset me. I want us to get this because what we should come to him for is not just what he could provide. That was the mistake of the multitude. But the Talmudim are not looking for that which is a temporary taste, but that which will endure unto the everlasting, the bread of life, the living water. And I believe it. And my behavior, our behavior should be corresponding. Did you get the message? Give God a praise right there. If you ain't used to self-examination in here, I don't, I don't know what restaurant you think you're coming to. So we so, again, what happens too much is we get looking at what the devil's doing. The devil didn't make them get on them boats and go across the sea, you sure? The devil didn't make, that, that, was, that was not the devil. That was their appetite. And so watch this, appetites will have you arriving at places that you shouldn't be. Watch this. Appetites will have you arriving, craving the wrong thing. But these motives matter. What are you doing over there in the first place? Did you come there to feed or be fed? Let that one marinate. 